It looks like I am live. It's working. Ah, oh. oh, it's working. Yay. Okay, let me let I was like, all of a sudden, I could see myself on Facebook. <sighs> Yay. All right. So sorry, everyone. We were having technical difficulty technical difficulties from behind the scenes. Um, the company that I used to actually go live with, they were having issues. So let me just turn off all my devices and woosah and get everything back to normal. So thank you so much for hanging out with me and waiting 30 minutes for this to get back on track. But we're here. We're going to celebrate. We're going to have a great time. It's ladies and gentlemen's night. Because we have Mr. Robert Bell Cool is going to be joining us very shortly and sharing about his journey at being the founder, one of the co-founders of one of the coolest groups ever. I'm, the party anthem for me anyway is Ladies Night. But I, of course, I love Celebration and Summer Madness. There's so many great songs, so many greats. I actually had to go and... I take a little sneak down my mom's vinyls and found this one. And wow. Okay. Like I have to ask how all of this came about, how they got together, how, what was their process and just making all of these great hits that have become the soundtrack to so many people's lives. And um, I, I'm like a kid in the candy store getting to chat to Mr. Robert Bell, um, Robert Cool Bell, excuse me. Hold on, and I'm bringing him on in. Thank you again, everybody, for hanging out. And Mr. Cool Bell, Mr. Robert Cool, I'm so excited to have you. Sorry, I'm like saying all the names out of order, but thank you so much for being patient with me while I was having all the technical issues. But no more talking about that. We are now talking all about you and your wonderful journey and the, one of the coolest bands ever, Cool in the Gang. So share a little bit about what you're up to now. What have you been doing since quarantine? Well, I'm on, as they say, lockdown in Old Town. Now, Old Town is Orlando, Florida. Okay. And Tony and I, who you met, and my cousin there, you know, um, we have a condo here. And then we do all our social media stuff here. All, I'll zoom in here. And... Um, I've been here for pretty much off and on for a year. I mean, I got a home up in Jersey. I go back and forth. Um, there's no cool in the gang gigs right now, but uh, we're looking forward to uh, maybe uh, starting in June, uh, depending on the pandemic, so I'll start working again. In the meantime, I'm talking to you, Camille, and the rest of the world. I, I mean, just even <laughs> hearing you say my name is like, wait, I can't believe this is real life. I feel like I should pinch myself because I mean, just so many songs that you and your your bandmates and brothers, like you guys created together. And I'm curious, I saw some of those cartoons that you guys have out too. And I'm just wondering when you first started for yourself, what was it like? Oh, hey, Tony. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm behind the scenes trying to make it work. <laughs> That's cousins for you. Big head Tony just had to make sure he had his cameo. No, I'm kidding. Um, I do believe we should introduce Tony because he does help out behind the scenes and he's one of the directors that clearly needed to make his cameo and he's helping make all of this happen. But um, I, I, like even with the, um, the cartoon, how did that come about? And then, of course, we got to find out all about how you um, the band Cool in the Gang because... When I was watching the cartoon, I just couldn't believe how you, how your humble beginnings, how they started. And I'm wondering if other people know how you guys came about as well. So if you don't mind sharing, I'd love to hear it. Yeah. Uh, my brother, before he passed, you know, I lost my brother about six months ago. Again, sorry. For and uh, uh, his wife, who's also the head of our production uh, record label, KTFA Entertainment, she put together this uh, documentary from a cartoon uh, perspective about uh, how we started. And uh, she did some little vignettes. So we all, we're not finished yet. We only did five. Yeah, I loved it. I was like, there's more. I need to know what's going on currently. I just want to make sure, because they're still saying that they're having some issues. I just saw the screener. So, so I just want to make sure everybody can hear you, hear us OK, and see us OK. I feel like it, because everybody's 
they're in the comments already so i'm sure they okay. can hear us okay nobody said they can't hear us so we'll just go with it but um so anyway uh, that's uh the first half of the uh the cool the gang story uh, uh the vignettes which will be uh at some point be a documentary uh maybe a, a, a mini uh movie series or something or tv movie ser a series or uh, netflix or somebody like that yeah, it's very entertaining. And, yeah, so that that's what that's about. Now, getting back uh, to the other question, we started back in 1964. At that time, we called ourselves the Jazzy X. And then we changed the name to Cool and the Flame, but before that was the Soul Town Band. Now, the Soul, Soul Town Band came after the Jazzy X. The Soul Town Band was, uh, we were backing up an organization in Jersey City, which was called the Soul Town Review. Now, the Soul Town Review was trying to be like the Motown Review. So we would have to learn all these uh, Motown songs. Uh, we were backing up about maybe seven to ten groups uh, twice a month. So we were the Soul Town Band. When we left the Soul Town Band, we were working at a club called the Blue Note Lounge. And one of the massive ceremonies for the Soul Town Review had this idea and concept of uh, cooling the flames. So he had a poster there, he had a big cube of ice, he had cool it into it, and then he had some flame on the bottom melting the ice cube or whatever. Anyway, we became cool in the flames. And then when we met our first manager and uh, producer, Mr. Gene Red, his father had been working with James Brown. He said, wait a minute, you can't use cool and the flames because you have James Brown and the famous flames. And we didn't want to have any problem with the Godfather. So we said, Gene, what should we call us? Have you got any ideas? But we didn't have any. We had some crazy things, lollipop, you know, chocolate disc. Taco Bell, no, that was one of the songs. Uh, and he said, you know, let's just call it cooling the game. He said, Gene, that works, cooling the game. Yeah. So there was no the egos involved in you having the center name in it at all? Because that's uh, a lot was, of guys, and I love young. hearing that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we were young and trying to get the job done. So the egos might have came a little later. <laughs> But in the beginning, that's what it was. Right, right. And so uh, we recorded our very first record in 1969. The record was called Cool and the Gang. The group was changed to Cool and the Gang. The album was called Cool and the Gang. So everything was Cool and the Gang. And it came out, uh, the single came out first, and then the album. And then we made our way through, through the 70s. And you guys have so many great hits together, just like one after one after one. And it seems like even every decade, there's like, it comes back around because either somebody remixes it or it's in a movie or a TV show. How do you, why do you think there's that? Um, what do you think it is about Cool and the Gang, that magic that you guys have that was able to just, no, no matter what generation, ages or decades, it's still something that everybody immediately they, when they hear it they want to dance they sing like it just brings that that emotion out of people what do you think they brought that, well, that you know that was, yeah that was a blessing uh to be able to do that uh because 69 uh the record came out and uh it was the top 40 record actually you know no singers just uh cool the gang chants and what have you and then we moved on to the album and we had songs like Breeze and Soul, Sea of Tranquility, Chocolate Buttermilk, Funky Man, Funky Granny. You know, we, we just come up with some weird names. <laughs> but it wasn't until the mid 70s when we decided to, well, we put it this way, the record company came to us and said, hey, you know, you guys been having some territorial hits, you know, Connecticut, Philadelphia, et cetera, et cetera. He said, it's this record out there, it's huge, it's called by Mongo Devango, or Devango, Soul Macusa. 
He said, now the producer of Soul Makusa, we would like for you to work with this guy. So we said, hmm. So we had one meeting with him and um, we didn't like, you know, what he was saying, how he meant to do it. So we went to a studio. It was called Baggies in, uh, in the Soho uh, Village area at like 8 o'clock in the morning. Mm. And we jammed until midnight. When we finished, we had to create funky stuff, Jungle Boogie, and Hollywood Swing. Okay? Yeah. No more problems from the record company after that. Okay. We talked about Hollywood Swing in Top 5, Jungle Boogie Top 5. Fuck yourself, they number one on the R&B charts for about eight weeks. Now, yeah. what was your process like? Like, how did you guys get started? Was it the lyrics first, the music first? I mean, I know you're the bass player, so were you always starting it off? Like, how did it go about? It was the music first. We just started jamming, you know? And then we came up with the concept, like uh, Ricky West, who's singing Hollywood Swing, the late Ricky West. He had a thing called Hey, Hey, Jayco. I said, no, that ain't working. You know, let's call it something else. Like Jayco goes to Hollywood. Okay. Anyway, it became Hollywood Swinging. Jungle Boogie, because my brother wrote that, that horn line for Jungle Boogie. And it just had that vibe. He said, what are we going to call this? Oh, Jungle Boogie. You know, it's a boogie record. And that became Jungle Boogie. Just keeping it. Funky stuff. Yeah. It was funky stuff. It was so funky. Charles, the late Charles Smith came out with that funky guitar part, mm -hmm. and uh, that was it. And then my brother came out with that uh, that horn line. Uh, my mother used to tell him, you know, uh, come up with uh, simple songs and simple melodies. And then he said, okay. He came up with da 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 down by the riverside. Uh huh. That became funky stuff. So my mother had a lot to do with that as well. Oh, wow. And after that, we were rolling. Then came Summer Madness and Open Sesame and all that. And uh, Summer Madness was the movie, uh, first movie with, uh, with uh, a Rocky movie. And uh, you know, Summer Madness, you know, that's been sampled by from like Will Fresh Smith Prince, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I was curious, what made you guys decide to keep it as an instrumental and never add lyrics to it because I mean it clearly doesn't need it. It's one of those like smooth Sunday driving either from the cookout and you got the itis or you're driving to the family and you're already reminiscing about the last family reunion. Like it's it 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 has so many memories built into that song it feels like. So what was your what was the thought well, we did. for you guys? We didn't but others did. <laughs> we'll spill for summertime. <laughs> And a lot of different samples of a, of a summer man. We kind of left it the way that was, you know. Mm -hmm. Although when we did the live version in London, we added uh, four female, and we, we took it into a swing, you know, summer madness too. I don't know if you heard that one. It was uh, live at the Rainbow uh, in London, and uh, we had uh, female uh, vocals on summer madness. I have to double check because now I'm curious if I heard it or not, but. It's just there's so many great songs for you guys and even songs that you guys wrote for other people as well. So it's like it's just amazing to have this opportunity to chat with you and just curious when you guys were coming up with your different albums and so on and um, coming up with these different hits. Did you ever think it would get to from especially considering how you guys started? Did you ever think it would be as big as it is as, as it is now? No, we didn't. It's all about the uh, the growth of Cool and Gang and the evolution of our music. Started from the jazz, the jazzy acts, like I said, Soul Town Band, um, Cool and Flames, and Cool and the Gang. And that mixture of music, because we would mix it up. Um, we would, uh, we had songs like uh, Funky Man, it was almost like rap. It was a, a, a formal rap, but we were talking on the record. Then we had Funky Grant, okay? And then we did the soundtrack for The Last Poets. Now, The Last Poets was, uh, I think they were the beginning of, of, of rap. Uh, we did the Hustlers Convention. We, did, we put four songs on it. 
So we continued to grow. And I knew we didn't know. And uh, we could be where we at today. Um, when they were um, burning records in Chicago, when the anti disco movement came, um, okay. said, well, what are they going to do now? Yeah, but see, our music wasn't disco, it was danceable. We, 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 other people called it disco. Anyway, long story short. A um, guy by the name of Dick Griffey, who had uh, sold our records, uh, we were on tour with the Jacksons, that's when Mike was still there. And he said, listen, you guys are doing great. He said, but I think you need a lead singer. And we said, well, well, we thought about it. And a lot of our songs, you know, you could actually sing on top of the tracks, but we didn't really have a lead singer. So we decided, to do that. Well, we said, well, Earth, Wind, and Fire had more of this white. I didn't feel better. Commodores had a lot of this. So we said, well, maybe it's time to, to make a change. Right. And that's decided to uh, 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 get a lead singer. But we didn't uh, audition a lot of people. It was only J.T. Taylor. But he came to the studio. My brother said, well, sing something with these cortex, sing something with these cortex. And he fit right in. And we kind of said, well, you know, we got to go. Now, we're going, we went on with that, I should say, to work on our first album with JT. Right. And uh, uh, my wife and I was hanging out in New York at uh, Studio 54 and also with Jeans at that time. And we noticed that every weekend it was a ladies' night. So, hmm. so I went back uh, to the guys who worked on the album. I said, I got an idea for one of the songs for the album. I said, what? I said, ladies' night. I said, every weekend there's a ladies' night. And my brother said, yeah, you're right. There is a ladies' night. And then the other song was hanging out, because I was hanging out. <laughs> now, George Brown came up with the track. He had a track. Um, that was to became ladies' night, and he he was telling me that he came up with that track, to being in New York and watching people walk up and down Fifth Avenue. So he's about to how they walk. He came up, don 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 don, like people walking. Yeah. So, oh, that became interesting. Then my brother and the JT, we all got together and we created Ladies' Night. And then Frankie Crocker. I don't know if anybody knows Frankie Crocker. Yeah, yeah, of course. Frankie Crocker broke the record in New York. Yeah. It became a huge record. And after that came Too Hot and then the ultimate celebration. <laughs> okay. Wow. And my brother again. Celebration. They had won two American Music Awards. Uh, I'm knowing. And a recent yeah. new award with the um, you guys are accepted in the Library of Congress. So congratulations on that as well. Oh, yeah. yeah, celebration show. Yeah, Library of Congress. But at the end of Ladies' Night, which uh, said, "Come on, let's all celebrate. This is your night tonight." He said, "That's another song." So we went back to the studio working on our second album. And he played this track. He said, "I got a name for this. What we call it? Celebration." I said, "Oh, Ladies' Night." And the song had that down home vibe to it. You know, I tell the story all the time. It's like grandma and grandpa sit down there in Birmingham, Alabama, sitting on the porch, having a glass of Kool Aid and some lemonade, and they just rock. And then it came, that celebration came, uh, came about. And the fact that you know, we went to the Midwest and we got a little Yahoo. <laughs> got a little country thing happening. Yeah, I love it. Said, no, not a record. It's going to become as uh, long as it has become. As we can. But, I, I said, can hear you very well. Like the Library of Congress, you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, I mean, uh, yeah. So, I mean, so that became, that's our, our biggest record so far. But we had a lot of others, as you know. Right. But uh, celebration is the ultimate. Yeah. 
Now, when it comes to being sampled by so many different artists, is there any of them that you're like, that's the most unique version you heard or um, they alternated in a way that you're like, oh, I, I would have never thought to have done that. I'm, I, I'm, it's an interesting way that they refreshed it or changed it around. Or not refreshed, remixed it. Well, one of the larger artists, as you know, is Will Smith. Right. How he took the summer madness. He didn't change anything. He played the whole track and he just rapped over the track. He didn't take little samples. Right. He played the whole track and then did his whole rap on that. And then there was um, Diddy, Puffy at the time, with Mace. With Hollywood Swing, a bad, bad, bad girl, a bad boy, whatever way it was. <laughs> and that became a big Yeah. And then, um, yeah. of course, Ladies Night with Little Kim as well. Oh, yeah. 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 Is that, that's why I'm like, there's so many different versions of some of the songs. I was curious if there was ever one that you're like, huh. <laughs> I'm, uh, it's an interesting way they did that, but um, for maybe for new generations of people who are interested in becoming a musician or starting their own band, is there any advice you would give on getting started? Well, I would say that uh, be serious about what you're doing. You know, work 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 hard uh, at your craft and try to be original, which is not easy today to be original because everything sounds alike, but uh, uh, to try to do, or, or do it in a way that uh, is interesting. Yeah. I have to take my hat off to Bruno Mars because he went back and got that old sound. It's definitely cool in the game. Uh, <laughs> the Gap Band, even his latest song, he yeah, that was pretty clever when he done with his latest song. You, you hear Del Fives in there, you, know, you hear Earth, Wind and Fire in there, mm -hmm. but you hear Bruno Mars, the way he has established. So, you know, so you have to really. Uh, Are there any today. other artists from um, that recent artists that you enjoy or? Well, I mean, uh, recent artists, uh, I mean, I, I like what Usher did and I like what, uh, you know, some of the other artists back there, uh, you know, uh, uh, Mint Condition. They had that sort of funk jazz thing happening, you know. Um, and they did, um, even, even a weekend, mm -hmm. he just did the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> so I take my hat off to all those young guys. Yeah. And um, what do you think has led to all of your longevity? Because you guys, I mean, again, like just because I, I think also just like your music is so fun and in encouraging that party at, at um party anthem type music as well. So I'm wondering like, what do you think? Cause there isn't a, I mean, there's like a couple of songs, maybe somebody will have one really great song, but it was just like one hit after another hit, like you said. And um, like, what do you think is that magic sauce that people need to make sure that they can have that longevity even to keep, like you said, you guys didn't get the egos till later, but to even keep you guys together and after having all those several hits. And then we get to the question. Well, we just try to stay current, you know, uh, in a way that um, uh, we still have our identity. When you hear a cool in that record, you know that school in that. It's the horn, the horns, or the vocals. Even though we have changed vocalists over the years, but there's still a energy there about a cool in that record. Mm -hmm. And that's what... Uh, that's kept us going, you know. Um, and songs like Who's Gonna Take the Weight or Higher Planes, you know, Get Down On It. We even had a song called John. I remember John and Coltrane. We just mixed it up. We just kept. Yeah, because you had it. jazz roots too. Do you ever think you'll yeah. do like a jazz album again, maybe? Or? Well, my brother was working on that after uh, he before he passed. Okay. And actually, he has a lot of material that he did before he passed. So you might, you know, you might hear some of that in the near future. Well, I mean, I noticed that you have some guitars near you. Are they connected or no? I wouldn't be that lucky, would I? Well, I have the, yeah, I have the, the, uh, the one bass here. Uh, okay. Uh, 
And and that, that's a good impression base because, uh, you know, I'm a small guy with a small head, and that has a small neck. You know? oh, so, so you have a specialized. That's when you know you've made it, when <laughs> you got customized. Well, well, I, I, you know, I think that could be right. Wow, I mean, so I, I, I would, I have to mention the poster behind you. So tell us a little bit about some of the new things that you also have going on, Mr. With like cool champagne, you also are doing as well. So what else do you have up on the horizons? Well, well, I guess you can see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was touring uh, several years ago in France, and. Uh, so Molly came to me and said, listen, I'm doing a champagne on the late Barry White, or it was a Barry White look alike, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the BGs. And he said, well, you be, would you be interested in uh, selling champagne on Mr. Tour? I said, well, you know, I'm not sure if my fans want to see the concert and buy a bottle of champagne. I mean, they probably want a T-shirt, cap, or something like that. I said, well, what I want to do, I want to get on the shelves. How do we get on the shelves? Mm -hmm. So I came up with this idea, uh, Le Cool Champagne. And I wanted to have that French vibe to it. And the actual deal that we cut was with the uh, Bertolo family, which is in uh, the Rims Champagne Company, where they make Dom Perignon, Cristal, mm -hmm. uh, Roulet, Picot. And, and I wanted to. I wanted it to blow up in France first right. and then come to America. Le Cool Germain. Now, what is this new uh, champagne coming out of there? Because, see, that's a very tight organization. You don't right. really get that. You don't get into that, that family. But it worked and it happened for us. And now we have a, a Le Cool Champagne. Okay. Although we got slowed up a little bit with those ships being backed up over there and that ship got uh, stuck in the Suez Canal. Mm. So you got Eddie Murphy coming to America. <laughs> I have to say that our champagne, the second order of our champagne, because we have a rosé. And you know, I've been told ladies like rosé. So, so we I got rosé. I know I love pink. Got... I'll get yeah. that. <laughs> okay, well, here we go. Coming soon, coming to America, in the next two weeks, you'll have Le Coup Champagne, Rosé, and the Grand Cru. And before the summer is out, we'll have the Blanc. Wow. So, so we got an exotic yeah, exclusive. That's exciting. Sure. And I was saying yeah. an East Spot exclusive of dropping new Le Coup Champagnes. I'm sure this is not an East Spot exclusive, but I like saying that when anybody says anything new <laughs> that maybe oh, hasn't yeah. been out on the Google yet. Um, Wow, so you mentioned Prince. So I have to mention, I hear there's like some family royalty that has also come a part of um, Cool of the Gang recently as well. Well, maybe not so recently, but it's become a family affair again in that sense. Can you share a little bit about that as well? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? My son, Hakeem? Yeah. Prince Hakeem? Uh -huh. Speaking yeah. of Prince Hakeem coming to America. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, right. Sorry, you know, I just recently rewatched Coming to America, so <laughs> it's fresh on my brain. <laughs> yeah, he wanted he wanted he wanted to have royalty on that soundtrack for that because the song was royalty. But he wrote the song about his mother when his mother passed. Uh -huh. uh, my wife's a kid, but she's and this whole thing was about he said women and ladies are royalty. Mm -hmm. So he also wrote it for them too. Because you like guys, he thinks. Us. <laughs> and we all the song about it. ladies, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, that, so that's a, so he's working with me with the champagne as well. Yeah. So is there so, gonna be one that's gonna call Cherish? I just realized well, Rose we, Cherish. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about possibly a ladies night. Oh, yeah. uh, that makes yeah. sense too. And, and, and to celebrate ladies champagne. Uh. Yeah. So, for every occasion but um speaking of your wife there's also like a cosmetics you're working on as well yeah we have a, a, a your wife? cosmetics that we're working on mm -hmm. well um that'll be coming out maybe 2022 okay. you know what made you dabble into so that 
that was something that uh, my wife uh, came up with. Because, you know, she, uh, she designed a lot of our clothes, you know, and uh, so, and uh, of course, she wanted to do something for the ladies, ladies uh, lingerie, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's how that came about before she passed. So we'd like to do that at some point. Like I said, maybe a 2022. Yeah. 10 year legacy. I love that. I was an esthetician and I love cosmetics. So I had to ask about what made you, um, like what made you want to continue it for as well? Cause I, I mean, it's a, it's a wonderful industry to get into, but, um, with your champagne, so you're taking care of a complete self care, um, basket <laughs> for mother's day in 2022. Mm. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and get to the questions from the audience as well, because there's a lot over here. Um, all right. Well, great. I'm seeing now. So, oh, no. Now it's not moving. Oh. Hold on. Well, I was going to answer. Oh, there we go. Oh, well, they're just basically saying how much they love you. There's not many questions more. So they're just saying how much they love cool on the gang and they love you and your family and everything that you guys have done and just oh <laughs> and there's of course a request they would love to hear you sing for them or um so they said it not me um don't shoot the messenger and just oh uh speaking of timeless and cosmetics in that sense the music is timeless but how do you stay so young so what is your trick to vitality and staying so young well, <laughs> try to eat right, live right, work out as much as I can, and uh, think yeah, I mean, it's all about diet and taking care of yourself. You know, uh, I guess that's it. And the blessings from from God to, to keep me, you know, safe and healthy. You know, especially doing now with the whole pandemic and COVID nineteen, I'm tough out there, but mm -hmm. yeah. I'm hanging in there no. as a poor old man. No. I say that. <laughs> yeah. you, you keep yeah. going to the top, right? So um, how else can we stay in contact and keep up with everything that you're doing? How do we know, stay updated in case you are back on tour again? Because I know I'm going to make sure I have a ladies' night and we're all going to go and celebrate at a Cool and the Gang show with you and your family and the rest of the band. Well, uh, the Cooling Gang uh, website is coolinggang.com. The champagne is the coolchampagne.com. Then uh, my uh, Instagram is uh, Mr. Dot Robert Key Bell on Instagram. Oh, man. No, I thank you so much. And I will say they are asking a lot. I'm not already asked. Already asked. <laughs> It's more about you asking if you would sing. Um, so what is, when, is there a favorite song for you or one that out of all the songs you like to perform the best? Or all your babies can't pick? Well, I had a lot of babies. I mean, of course, you know, Celebration, you know, Get Down On It, uh, Ladies Night, of course, I came up one of the writers for Ladies Night. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's funky stuff, Hollywood Spring and Jungle Buggy. Summer Madness, Open Sesame. There you go down there. Yeah, so you never get tired of playing any of them. That's great to hear. Yeah. Well, we do what we have to do, but I mean, I've had a little rest, rest now mm -hmm. because we haven't been on the road for over a year. That's right. Now, we have some gigs coming up, and we're going to see if they're going to happen or not. But, um, I'm kind of rested dealing with social media. I mean, I've been doing this thing for 50 years, and so now I've had a chance to be off. It's the first time I've been off for a whole year, my whole career. Yeah, so what were you doing during that year? Did you pick up any new hobbies? Were you cooking bread with everyone else? <laughs> well, I was doing what I'm doing now, yeah. on social media. <laughs> well, I appreciate At one point, you couldn't even go out. Mm -hmm. You know, you went out, so you know, in the air, oh, they got COVID-19. You got to stay in the house. Well, not too much to do. <laughs> we'll stay in the house and do what we're doing now. But things are starting to pick up. But what happened was it gave me a chance to promote the cool champagne. But then I have been uh, going out doing some promotion now for the cool champagne. 
Well, I was doing over 100 shows a year. But now, uh, I'm, I'm making my rounds in a few cities, you know. You know, try to stay away from uh, social distancing. But that's it. Now, do you have any, um, I guess, on the road remedies since a lot of times you guys are traveling so much and I'm sure catching colds and still having to perform. Did you have any like tricks or even, I guess, superstitions to try to avoid catching bugs? So when people are back out on the road, we can maybe learn some double up on vitamin C or vitamin D or, or whatever tricks you might have. You've been doing it a long time. You just hit it. Vitamin C, vitamin D. Okay, oregano. Mm. Uh, uh, immune uh, uh, herbs uh, and, and try to get some sleep in there, try to work out when, when you can, you know, and with all your healthy teas and that. That's what my been my, my yep. Stay healthy, you don't have to worry about it. I get it. Best, what is it? Your best health is your wealth, or your health is your wealth. That's it. Mm. Gotta stay healthy. Yeah, so is there any other family members that are getting into the music business or entertainment business that you want to shout out and promote? Because we saw Cousin Tony is the director. Maybe he wants to share a little bit what he's doing, too. But is there any other family members that, that are part of your entourage that you work with? Well, my brother Amir works with me. He's been with me for years. I was out in Vegas. He worked on a few projects. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I lost my brother. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Um, you know, my son, I came to do some producing. Oh, that's pretty much what our family is. So we have other artists that we will be working with probably in 2022 now. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a, a company called London Gate Entertainment, and uh, we have about three, four artists down here in the Florida area that we'll be working to try to do something for his artists for next year. Oh, that's fantastic. Can't wait to hear what's coming up on the horizons. Well, I really appreciate you being my guest today. I want to be um, considerate of your time because even though we started late for them, you were right on time. You were early, actually. So um, I, I, I know you have probably many other engagements and everyone's just saying thank you so much for uh, all the many wonderful records over the years that they had, they enjoyed as well. And this is this has been a real honor. So thank you again for being my guest. I really appreciate it. Okay. Well, thanks for having me. Oh, it's my honor. Honestly. Thanks again. Okay. Wow. Oh, like, I won't sing. I won't ruin the song for you guys by singing. But how cool is that? Wasn't that the greatest? Thank you for waiting and hanging out for me. I'm sorry about the technical issues. But, um... Again, this is the eSpot with Camille. Make sure you stay and um, subscribe, follow, tell your friends about the show. Make sure you share this and share more information about Mr. Robert Cool Bell and check out his website so you can find out more about Le Cool Champagne as well as all the other different projects and products he has coming our way. Very exciting stuff. So thanks again for being for hanging out with me tonight. I'm so flustered because I also went to the dentist today. I had my root canal. So half of my face is still numb. I can't even feel my tongue. I hope I didn't, wasn't biting myself while I'm talking because I, I, I'm. if you could see the sweat pools I'm making right now, because this has just been like, this is the coolest night of my life right now. So thank you again for being here, hanging out with us. And uh, make sure you tune into the East Spot again next week, 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. And you have a wonderful night. Take care of each other. And we'll see you again.